Jerry, can you hear me? We haven't got much time. My magic isn't strong enough to ward off Zarov's curse for long. He banished you into the first tree. I tried to shield your mind from the clutches of his black magic as best I could. Do not falter, Jerry. Be on your guard. Zarov's spell nails have darkened the soul of the first tree. Others must be trapped in its magical wood as well. Go and find them. Do not succumb to fear, Jerry. You must not give up. Must not give up. Not give up. Give up. Must give up. You must give up. Uh, where, where am I? I? I must have fallen asleep. The lazy boy fell asleep right in front of a portal tree. <laughs> but he wants to be a tree walker. What a sacrilege. Plato? I'm sorry, but my friend Jerry needs help again. I haven't got time for strangers. Strangers? But I am Jerry. He thinks that cardboard figure is me, and he doesn't remember me at all. <laughs> what wretch is this? Daring to disturb the quiet of the woods. The toad croaked angrily. It really didn't like being woken up. <laughs> oh, it's a gigantic toad from the forest. Silly little Jerry was actually dumb enough to approach a dangerous, gigantic monster toad. <laughs> I should talk to it. Maybe it knows how I can get out of here. An excellent idea. <laughs> Silly little Jerry is completely befuddled. Hmm. The toad's breathing rather heavily. No wonder it's got these ugly posters sticking all over its body. I'll try to tear off the posters. I'm going to squish you. Let me get any closer. You spell disaster for everyone. You used us. You want to hitch a ride on my bike, but I need to deliver the mail. Jerry didn't care what the frog said because he was too lazy to walk. What? But it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> Not so huge. What have we here? It looks like a script to me. The Curse of Zaroth. Act One. Silly little Jerry. I am not silly. <laughs> Hated by all woodlanders. No, that's a lie. An obnoxious moocher through and through. That's not true. Finally trampled to death by the angry rock toad. Who, who would write this nasty stuff? <laughs> <laughs> what a crybaby! Nothing is like it seems. You must give up. The spell nails have darkened the soul of the first tree. Just give it up. The lizards. <laughs> Zaroff. Hooray for Zaroff! I must stop Zaro. Curses. Two large boulders. That were much too heavy for puny little Jerry, of course. Huh, I'll show you. See? Cool, I'm almost right. Milk does do a body good. I wonder what the switch does. 
it switches on the light. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Hello? Hello there. Luminance Lighting Service. How may I help you? A good friend of mine would like to be back in the limelight. Who's the lucky guy then? A large toad, here on stage. Very well. I can see illuminating this gentleman will be a truly daunting task. This looks like a job for a limelight deluxe. Chestnuts went pretty far up his nostrils. Take your hands off me, human. I bought you! My mind is clearing. I was willing to squish you, but the spell that fogged my mind is now broken. Ah! I will now return home to the streams of time. Isn't that good enough for you? <laughs> Plato, are you all right? I'm sorry, but my friend Jerry needs help again. I haven't got time for strangers. Strangers? But I am Jerry. Jerry didn't care what the frog said because he was too lazy to work. What are you saying, Jerry? You want to borrow my bike? But I need to deliver the mail. Jerry didn't care what the frog was saying. He would simply take the bicycle when his friend was asleep. He thinks that cardboard figure is me. And he doesn't remember me at all. Oh, Jerry? Jerry, where have you been? Where have I been? The three of us were in the dark tunnel. And then... Oh, just as long as you're doing all right. I was about to say the same. Friendship removes the nail. Who's supposed to believe that? Hey! What's going on here? Where did Plato go? Unfortunately, Plato, the clumsy amphibian, recently had an accident with his bicycle. Oh, really? He broke all his frog legs on a note while being forced to deliver a useless letter for a certain... Jerry Hazelnut. Ha-ha! <laughs> Me and miserable bitch bit. Hey, look who's here. Spotting Tatador's porky. Maybe he can help me. <laughs> hey, a four-leaf clover. It's firmly nailed to the ground. There's no way I can lick it out. Don't you touch me, Shamrock! You're no good numpty! <laughs> the Curse of Zaroff, Act 2. Let's see. Without hesitation, Jerry accepts the leprechaun's gold <laughs> and in return gives up his hopeless fight. He <laughs> ceases to live. in the hill. The silly boy felt himself slowly going crazy. Reality itself appeared to be breaking apart. There's something behind it too. Hmm. I can't ride in it with my hands. Right, this should work. Wait, Jerry. Yes? Do you really want to know how deep that rabbit hole goes? Excuse me? You're about to uncover a terrible secret. Fine by me. Believer? Is that all? 
Jerry is so disappointed he wanted to die. <laughs> No! Ouch! The lovely shamrock! He came off! I I'm sorry. I think I ruined the lawn. Ouch! Oh no! Me gold! Me gold! There! Now I can reach the top hat. Ha! Jerry's lethal trap is sprung, and he steals the poor leprechaun's much more elegant top hat. I just want to get out of there. Dirty thief! Well, who cares? Me poor! Me poor gold! Me gold! My... Nothing but worthless plastic chips! Curses! By all the snatty snap noses of all the peat bug banshees! If it isn't, young Jerry, the plumber, looks like you're with me of the delusion, boy. Thank you ever so kindly. I surely owe you. Should I turn someone into a sheep to stop this madness? No, no, no! You must help me remove the nail. All right, boy. And O'Donnell doesn't like to be beholden to anyone. This wish is on the house. Hail and rain and wafts of mist. Thanks, Mr. O'Donnell. The curse I was under is broken. I'm going home. And O'Donnell is born for freedom. You'll remember that, you ugly conniving whisperer. of volcano, sharp swords and man-eating fox spirits. What a beautiful place to fail in, Jerry thought. Just give up, Bonehead. Hey. I'm a fox, I swear. Kitsuna. You are trapped in a human's body. No mask can hide that, Kitsune. But... Humans and foxes can never be friends. But if a human accepts a fox for who she is, doesn't that count? Even if that were the case, why aren't you changing back? I, I, I tried to change back. It, it just won't work. You may wish to be a fox again, but your heart is lost. I shall protect your ears from the confusion wrought by humans. Please help me. I shall heal you from being human, or devour you as a human. <laughs> Kitsuna? Louder! But how? <laughs> Kitsuna! Uh, she can't hear me. <sighs> Human and fox cannot be friends. We have nothing in common. There cannot be anything. And even if there were, we would break their hearts. Biting their flesh or biting their soul. That is the only bond permitted between us. Great, a new script. The Curse of Zaroth, Act 3. Little Jerry won't give up. He kept bothering the foxes incessantly. Until they grew tired of the immature smart Alec and devoured him. 
bones and all. Ouch! <laughs> Let's see what happens when I hold this thing against the bell. <laughs> My ears! Remember her bell, <laughs> Kitsuna, J Jerry. Are you trying to rob me of my remaining senses, human? I shall have all humans suffer for this, including your little Kitsune. I'm a fox, I swear. You may wish to be a fox again, but your heart is lost. I shall protect your ears from the confusion wrought by humans. Jerry! Quick, Kitsuna, run away! You belong to us! I will always be a fox, Jerry. <laughs> and Jerry's sound carrier shattered in his backpack. Oh, great. The sound carrier broke. <laughs> Kitsuna? Are you alright? Jerry, I... Humans and foxes can never be friends. But if a human accepts a fox for who she is, doesn't that count? You may wish to be a fox again, but your heart is lost. I shall heal you from being human, or devour you as a human. Kitsuna, don't listen to him. He's not himself. He will keep you forever. Jerry, why don't you just leave? I will always remain a fox. I know, and that's a good thing. You are you. You are a fox. I am. I am a fox. <sighs> Foxes fight. <sighs> Young Kitsune, I am but a blind guardian, but my mind once again sees clearly. I owe you my thanks, human. Be a friend to her. Friendship removes the nail? Who's supposed to believe that? As far as I can see, the wind is very cold. The boy was so overjoyed at getting to spend another vacation in one of the most beautiful places on Earth. V vacation? That, cheering loudly, he tore off his clothes and jumped into the ice-cold water. Jerry on the rocks! <laughs> I'm beginning to think you don't care about me at all. Mr. Hazelnut, I resent your attitude. The only thing I care about is art. But you just won't follow the script. Yes, please f f forgive me. Oh, oh just, just try harder. I certainly hope so, you useless amateur. No. no, no. The mighty polar whale <laughs> broke through the ice oh, behind man. Jeremy. And with his mighty voice, he proclaimed, You have made a brave effort. You even advanced to the edge of the eternal ice. But you cannot withstand the cold. It is time to give up. To let go. Join me as I slide into the dark cold waters. Under 
great another script. The magnum opus of the fantastic Zaroff! A first-class literary stroke of genius, you ignoramus! The title is The Curse of Zaroff, fourth and final act. A masterpiece of simplicity! Jerry was at the North Pole, it was cold, he was freezing. Just like really being there. It's so authentic. Jerry was snowed in and frozen. Everyone was happy about that. The polar whale sang with joy. <laughs> what a beautiful ending. So tragic. <laughs> Jerry couldn't resist. He had to lick it just once. You just want my tongue to freeze, do you think? Exactly. Finally, you've read the script. Go right ahead, then. No. I'm going to save the game for later. Oh, the boy is just too smart for you. <laughs> Quiet! The Christmas tree. Mum always bakes delicious mince pies for Christmas. The young boy's yearning for the familiar sweets was downright overwhelming. It painfully reminded him of the fact that his mother would never again hold him in her arms. <laughs> this is just low! The curse and all that is all right, but dragging his mother into this? Disgusting! <laughs> Quiet! Maybe it'll make me feel better if I take down the decorations. Ho ho ho! Now I have a very festive fishing rod. I bet this is how Santa fishes. You know, I bet if Santa ever goes ice fishing, he takes along plenty of warm milk and cookies. Right, let's see what happens. The polar whale had taken the bait and dragged the wimpy boy down into the icy depths. Just a cable? Ah, that's an evil, um... Electric. It looks electric. Yes, that's it. A wicked electric cable eel that's about to, uh, just a, just a moment. That's about to wrap itself around my scrawny neck and zap me with a lethal electric shock. Yes, exactly. Very good. I think you need a vacation if you depend on a 12-year-old to trade your heart for you. The cable loops back there to where all the wind is coming from. Wait, why am I saying back there when I'm clearly on an ice floe in the middle of the ocean? <laughs> I'll just pull on the cable. <laughs> hey look, it's a wind machine. It looks like the fan's direction can be changed. No, you can't do that. The fan blades would chop up your delicate fingers. Baloney. Ah. That is much better. Thank you, little landlord. No, no, no! Our nightmare is now over. But many are still dwelling under the curse of darkness. You have got to help them. But I'm nothing but a herring. And Zeroth is a mighty whale! Ha 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 ha! I'm way too small. <laughs> that is exactly your strength. Little lad walker. Woohoo, Jerry! You can do it, Jerry! Quiet! We believe in you, Jerry! Go, Jerry! I shall now dive home. Be strong, Jerry. Be strong. I will stop Zaroff. 
I will stop him. Curses. No, no, no! You'll ruin everything! You... Jerry removed the nail. He realized that this was all just a dream that he and his friends were trapped in. He understood that he was able to change the dream. But... Because it was his dream. But you can't. The unfriendly man congratulated Jerry. Congratulations, boy. You did it. And was suddenly much nicer than before. That was truly fantastic, Jerry. Boy, this was weird, but you kept on top of it. Absolutely awesome. The end. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for... Jerry Hazelnut! <laughs> and finally, Jerry woke up. No! No! This is impossible! We're back in the clearing. The audience? Who oh, uh, uh, are they spirits? They're dreamers. The cars brought them here. Why are they so angry? I've seen this before. They are restless. They are furious. They could forget their way back in their blind rage. Uh, and then? Then they would just become empty spirits haunting the dreams of others. It's a dharma. Watch out, Jerry! It came from over there. Zaro. You, calm down the dreamers. I I'll take care of Zaro. But, J Jerry! He's right. You can sing, can't you? Well, yes, but... <laughs> Now, where did Zorov get to? You! You defeated the lizards, removed the nails. The Marquis chose you well. Now, show me what you're made of, Dreamwalker! Jerry, defend yourself.
when two spells of the same kind clash, they will create great magic energy for a few moments. Try to take advantage of that. You repelled his spell with the nail and rendered it harmless. Zaroff lost one of his spells. Done. You repelled his spell with the nail and rendered it harmless. Zaroff has only two spells left now. Excellent. Now Zaroff has only one remaining spell. I had for this I shall <laughs> You did it, Jerry. Zarov used his magic against you and lost. I didn't mean to do it. Not like this. Marquis, are you... He's still too weak. He cannot answer you. Who, who, who's the boy? Where did he come from? The tree. It remembers. It remembers the teacher and the apprentice who once visited this place. Zaroff did evil things. That's why he cannot look the child he once was in the eye. But who among us could, after all? Who is he? What does all this mean? The Great Zaroff. One of the greatest illusionists of his time. You may have heard of him. Not many remember him now. In reality, he wasn't just an illusionist. He was one of us, a magician. Zaroff was the last apprentice of the Marquis de Hoto. When the rabbit trained him, he was just a boy 
not much older than you. When his training was finished, young Zaroff and his teacher visited the clearing of the first tree, and they left some traces behind. The tree would remember them. Soon, the Marquis and Zaroff became living legends as they hurried from one world to the next, from portal to portal, they help wherever help was needed. They were true tree walkers, but their path led them to a place where darkness ingrained upon their souls. I was there when the mirror of shadows disclosed to them their own potential. They beheld their own brightest virtues and saw the darkest chasms within their souls. And only few can bear that kind of truth. So it was only a matter of time until the dark seed sprouted within them. And when it did, the Marquis was the first to start doubting the ideals of the tree walkers. Then the apprentice started doubting the teacher. And finally, the two of them turned on each other in hatred. In his blind wrath, the Marquis banished his apprentice to the world from whence he came. He took away his ability to walk between worlds, so that every portal would remain closed to him. Zaroff became a prisoner in his own world. A world that had room for magic only on its stages. Thus, he became the great Zaroff, the illusionist. But the appeal of the new tricks he invented to captivate his audience soon wore off. And Zaroff fell for a second time. Marooned. Forgotten. In his despair, he began to rattle the doors of his reality. He turned to alchemy, forbidden experiments, to open up the portal worlds once again. And with every failed experiment grew the hatred for his teacher and for his audience that no longer cared for him. And when Zaroff was finally driven by nothing other than fury and revenge, something answered to his rattling and knocking. Consortium Squamata, the lizards. With its false promises, the consortium had already passed through many worlds. Promises that would disturb the balance of nature. Zaroff was approached by four members of the consortium. They offered the magician a deal. The lizards had surreptitiously obtained the ability to walk between worlds, but they didn't know the way to the most secret of places. Zaroff, on the other hand, had memorized the paths of the tree walkers, the portals, the path to the clearing of the first tree. Thus, he led the lizards through the portals, betraying the tree walker he had once been with every step of the way. In exchange, they gave him the power to cast a curse on one of the first trees. The lizards gave Zaroff four nails. Four nails made of four cursed metals, serving to drive the magician's spell deep into the trunk of the first tree where it would take effect and make the inhabitants of the portal worlds his final audience, thus trying to obtain respect and glory by force. Zaroff's final great triumph. And while the portal worlds were suffering from the curse of Zaroff, the lizards invaded them, as they had done many times before. 
only one could have provided help. But Zarov's mentor, the Marquis de Hoto, had spiraled himself further into the darkness that the Mirror of Shadows had revealed to him. The Cold One! He was willing to let us freeze to death. The good Tree Walker, who had trained Zarov. I had already given up hope I would ever meet him again. But when Zarov entered the clearing, the first tree remembered the magicians. When it recognized the threat that the apprentice posed, the first tree brought to life and sent out the memory of his teacher. So, the memory of the Marquis de Hoto, shaped long before his own corruption set in, left the clearing of the first tree and promptly forgot that it was nothing but a memory. And once again, he was a true tree walker. He set forth to find himself an apprentice, somebody who would be able to stop Zarov. He answered your call. The roots of the first tree run deep, even into our dreams. The Marquis found you, Jerry, because you had a dream. Now. This place might be his only salvation. He will remain in the shadow of the first tree. The Marquis, the first tree, they were right. You went beyond yourself. That's how you finally got to this place and faced down Zarov. The Marquis made you a true tree walker, but you were forced to pay a high price. When the Marquis went from idea to reality by entering your world, Something else had to go. Your father, as though through a revolving door, the Marquis came to life, and your father was lost in the rift between worlds and forgotten. But do not worry. You saved us all, and very soon we will return the favor. An acquaintance of mine once said, Only those who get on the way can find their way. And so it came to pass that Jerry had to leave his mentor behind in the clearing of the first tree. Jerry knew that he had been more than the memory of a courageous, one-of-a-kind tree walker, more than the first tree of mousewood needing Jerry's help. He had been a friend. Then, for the last time, the Marquis slowly turned and lifted his hand as if to wave goodbye. I, I will never forget you, said Jeremiah Hazelnut. And I, I will never forget you, came the reply from the shadows at the foot of the tree. And the boy knew, the Marquis, the tree, he would remember him. When Jerry returned to Mousewood, lost in thought, there was music in the streets, because for the first time in a long while, an apprentice had come to Mousewood to study the art of arts. And for the first time in a long while, the treetop festival, the celebration of friendship and courage, was held in honor of an apprentice who had finished his training, in honor of the tree walker, Jeremiah Hazelnut, the rabbit's apprentice. Isn't this a grand table? We put it together yesterday in a hurry. Very stylish, boys. And it was great fun, too. Yes, diligent work is fun. You again? Not on duty, then? No. Penny is now the Crow Scout. He has to stay away from the cannon now. A few nights ago, he shot blow nuts at the town. I knew there was something wrong with him. Poor Penny. Mr. Spitzman, what are you doing here? Well, I heard that in your honor they were holding the treetop festival earlier this year. So, naturally, I turned right around and came back. You must tell me all about your adventures. And you tell me about yours. 
Oh, you'll come and see me soon. I brought some lovely kelp tea from the coast. They are holding the treetop festival unusually early this year, but... <laughs> Sometimes it's a really good thing to revive old traditions. <laughs> this is the most fun I've had in ages. Glad to hear it. This is a great party. Almost makes you forget all your travels. Jerry, I heard you're about to leave us. I hope you'll visit us again soon. Sure, I live just around the corner. Well, so to speak. Really? How far is that on a bike? Uh, just a portal away. Oh, well then you'll have to show us your home soon. And, uh, how's your experiment with the exploding cookies going? Plato, my little cream puff, was really impressed. Ribbit! But we won't know what the folk of Mousewood will think until next weekend. That's when I'll start selling them. Sounds great. Yes, we've been very lucky lately. Sometimes, I even dare to hope that old Uli will come back. I hope you like the cupcakes too. Nah, oh, I don't really go for sweet things. They're not good for the teeth, do you? Mm. Young carrots, on the other hand. Mm. I could gorge on those all day. Somehow, you're surprised. Then why don't you order a carrot cake from Anya next time around? Is that supposed to be funny? Um... Hey, is it true that you saw the fox? Yes, and I befriended it. How cool is that? Much cooler than my stupid violin. Dance at last! Oh yes! Oh hey! <laughs> Have you seen my son by any chance? He, he, he wrote me a letter saying he wants to retire to Coconut Farm Islands. Would you believe it? Just as I said. He's a born comedian. I, I bet he's sitting behind some mushroom, thinking up new material for our show. It's amazing how my friends can dance. I wish I could dance like that, but I look snazzier. Ha! <laughs> Here's our tree walker now. I hope I can interview you soon. Then you can let us in on how you tamed the lizards, chased off the crows, and defeated the evil magician. Okay, but... No false modesty, please. You've got a good face for the radio. Hey, youngster, remember, just because your apprenticeship is finished, that doesn't mean you're a master now. You whippersnapper. Age and experience form the stainless foundation there is. Don't you forget that. And now let's celebrate. Here's to you. <laughs> Here they all go again, drinking our juice. Typical. Bah, they have good taste. Whatever would they do without us wood dwarves, eh? I love the treetop festival. I come here every year. I have this magic premonition that you will not be the last apprentice the people of Mousewood acknowledge in this fashion. Greetings, Jeremiah. The portals have recovered. You can go home now, Jerry. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. And I'm going to come with you. My father, my mother, will they be back? They already are. I've had to stop your dad from eating the entire blackberry pie himself. I was hungry. I feel like I've been on my legs forever. Me too.
And that's all Jeremiah could say. The fox girl still claims that he cried. That's so not true. <laughs> thus Jeremiah Hazelnut returned home. And thus ends our story. But with every ending, other stories begin. They are like waves in the ocean, always in motion, spilling over and intertwining. Some stories tell of huge problems we create for others that can barely be solved, even with courage, especially when you're nothing but a tiny mouse. Someone is going to step up. And then there are scary tales as well. Secret, forbidden ones that you can only tell behind closed doors. Are you suddenly cold, too? Who... who was that boy? My friend's apprentice. Thank you for helping him. He broke Zaroff's curse. I underestimated Zaroff, and that boy, too. Will you finally free me from this prison? so that I may once again protect the portal worlds. This kind of thing must never happen again. You know that this is impossible, old friend. Nothing is impossible.